Paul for considering your time. That this is a project we're very excited about. Awesome. And uh, yeah, we just wanted to ask you a few questions. You know, like about your trajectory with music. What does it mean to you? Like how you got involved with art. Um, do you want is anything on top of your head that you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, well I guess I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. So my name is James, uh, I'm working here in Dublin City in Music Maker. Uh, we are a company that's been around for a couple of years. Uh, I think the guys have been in this building since maybe 1982. Uh, it's a very cool little spot. I've been here since 2019. Uh, and my kind of primary thing is guitars. That's kind of what I deal with. Not so much acoustic stuff. I have good knowledge of this room, but I kind of primarily specialize in electric guitar. Mm. Yeah, that's my kind of thing. And I studied music in college. I studied music in school. And then I went on to study in college in a, a college called BIM. It's the British and Irish Institute of Modern Music. It's currently based up on Francis Street. And again, I specialize in guitar. That was my kind of, uh, yeah, that was my So thing. when did it all start for you? Why did you get involved with that? So I started playing piano when I was about nine years old. Um, my parents bought a piano for the house and they kind of, they, they pushed me to, to kind of start that out. Uh, I hated it. It was terrible, you know. I think sitting down and kind of learning formally, when you're a kid particularly, you know, you get distracted by things and my teacher at the time wanted me to play a lot of kind of classical pieces and stuff like that so didn't really appeal to me at all but fast forward to about maybe 12 years old and I started to play the drums which I love like drums are a great instrument uh, for kind of learning the basis of music because you kind of remove melody from the situation for a minute and you focus quite heavily on you know timing and rhythm and that sort of stuff so that gave me kind of a great kind of basis for music and then when I was 14 my dad kind of pushed me to play guitar you know he uh, he has a beautiful vintage acoustic at home he, he pushed me to play that and uh, I remember him saying you know he'd be like you know you can take it anywhere you can bring it to a party to a friend's house you know girls will love it you know that kind of thing uh, and that was when I was like okay fantastic I'm gonna play guitar and I bought my first electric guitar and he kind of went, no, go back, no, acoustic, no, stick with the drums, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of fell in love with electric guitar, it was a big thing, you know, I'm, I, uh, in terms of my personality, my family have always said I'm very kind of outgoing and very friendly, and I think that pairs quite well with the idea that, you know, guitar, particularly when you see bands nowadays, they're all kind of front and center, you know, guitar players, they're up in their face and stuff like that, so yeah, it's just, ama it's amazing, yeah. So your favorite instrument it's the guitar oh yeah, yeah. By, by a long shot I, I do a little bit of everything I play some bass guitar as well mm -hmm. like I, I sing and stuff like that but yeah guitar is just uh, it's awesome yeah it's amazing okay. yeah. And have you ever performed uh, guitar in front of an audience is that something that you enjoy yeah so I've been playing uh, gigs for a very very long time since I can remember uh, I probably played my first show when I was about maybe kind of maybe 13 14 uh, when I was playing drums, I played band. I played in a band. So I played drums for a while, and then when I was maybe sixteen, seventeen, that's when I got into my first band uh, with guitars. I don't know if you can kind of tell my by my, my appearance, but I was big into kind of heavier music at the time. You know, stuff like Metallica, Slipknot, that all that kind of vibe. That was my thing. And uh, yeah, as I've gotten a little bit older, like I found like a a really kind of a really passionate love for rock and roll and country music and that kind of stuff. So it's a it's a weird mix, but yeah, I've been I've been playing shows for for a few years now. Yeah, and I currently uh, my the current originals band that I'm playing with is a band called Jailbirds, and uh, two of the guys, their brothers, uh, they're Australian French. It's a weird combination. And, uh, country rock, Australian. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with that band, I guess you get a nice blend. Like ACDC would have been a big thing when I was growing up. Mm. Uh, so with them being Australian, you get a bit of that. Like you get a bit of the kind of the Thin Lizzy thing. Axel, our other guitar player, he's big into ZZ Top, that kind of stuff. So it's a nice mix. It's just kind of classic, good, kind of feel good music. Uh, yeah, and I've been playing with them about going on seven years now, so 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so I, I, I couldn't even tell you how many, how many shows I've played by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. And uh, you talk that uh, your music is something like of a mixture, right? Mm. The, how does the public react to that when you're performing live? It's an interesting one. Um, like, I guess for us, we're not. This sounds maybe kind of strange, but like we're not a very political band. I don't feel like there's a massive kind of maybe agenda behind our music. You know, it's it's just show up, have a drink, have a good time. That's kind of the idea that we we would have behind it. Um, and it's kind of it's been that way all along. Like we've never tried to put across any sort of really serious message when it comes to the music that we play. Because uh, we have such such a great time. Like for me, performing live music is uh, it's the best thing in the whole world. It's just amazing. So I feel like that's the kind of the feeling that we want to get across to people. That people come to the show and they watch and they just enjoy. They have a good time. Maybe they're out on a Friday or a Saturday night with their friends. Uh, yeah, something like that. So, Will you say that you express yourself into music? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's a very expressive thing, music. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. um, I have this thing about music theory. Uh, you know, obviously, when, when it comes to music, there's such a baseline. Uh, music theory is incredibly difficult. And there's going to be however many people come and play music, whether they're playing guitar or drums or piano or whatever. Um, and for me, it's always been about uh, finding your own way to express uh, yourself because not everybody is going to be the next Eddie Van Halen, you know, super shredder or, uh, you know, kind of a, they might prefer that over kind of simple kind of country songwriting, like f folky acoustic stuff. Everyone has, I think, a way of uh, expressing themselves through music, which is a really, really cool thing. And that's why I love it, you know, yeah. that's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, do you have any important lesson or skill that you have came across in your time being an artist? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if there was one thing I've taken from music, it's difficult. It's certainly if you have, uh, if you have uh, something in mind that you want to do with music, it's, you know, not everybody, again, is going to become the next big thing. Not everyone is going to make it in the way that they might want to make it in music. So not everyone is going to be playing big stages in front of you know 10 15 thousand people um but i think the most important thing i've learned is that uh if that's something that you want if that's something that you want to do uh it's really important to kind of have a vision for that i remember watching a documentary a couple of years ago from one of my favorite bands an australian band called airborne and they're quite successful now they've done really really well for themselves they're touring the world and they play in front of thousands of people every night and they They really love it. Um, but I remember watching an interview with their drummer talking about uh, how they kind of got to where they are. And he talks about the, this kind of almost like a tunnel uh, or a, like a road. And if you can visualize whatever it is that you want to do, just keep that picture in your mind and uh, work really hard. And nine times out of ten, it'll, it'll go at least some way that you will want it to go. So yeah, nice. that's probably the best thing. I've, that, <laughs> the best thing that I've learned. Anyway, yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's nice. A very uh, yeah fulfilling experience. Yeah, sure, yeah. absolutely. Well, uh, I I bet that it's not always easy, and you say like there were hard times. Can mm. you talk a little more about that? Have you ever come across like something crazy or uncomfortable? Yeah, I have a really funny example for that question. Uh, I remember back in 2019. Uh, I was playing a run of festival shows with Jailbirds uh, between Ireland and we did some shows over in France as well. We did a kind of run of shows throughout the summer that we had booked in advance. And uh, one, of the, one of my favorite shows that we've ever played was at a festival over in France uh, in a place called Monjou. It's called the Monjou Festival. And it was huge for us. Like we'd never done anything like this. There was maybe five, six thousand people, massive big stage. You know, we showed up And I think the attitude towards uh, original musicians is a little bit different in Europe than it is in Ireland. It's a little bit unfortunate to say, but, you know, we arrived and we were a small band. Nobody had ever heard of us. And we had a little van with all of our equipment in it. And they helped us load out 
they, you know, they had towels and water and food for us and beers and, you know, we were looked after for the day and we had people moving our equipment around for us. We played an amazing show and, uh, yeah, then after the show we were helped to pack down. We were, again, we were given food and, and water and stuff like that and we were paid and kind of sent on our merry way. And the next week <laughs> we were playing another festival here in Ireland uh, and we got changed for the show in a porta potty or a portable toilet oh, just around the back of the stage you know it's funny yeah. how it's like you can have such a flip you know yeah, when, when, when you, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't get lucky you know uh, that's a yeah that's a good example do you think that's discouraging for people that are starting in this uh, like with music right now in Ireland? it can be I think like the pandemic I find was a really weird time for musicians in Ireland, you know, it was really discouraging uh, for, I feel, Irish musicians to be kind of put on the long finger, you, I, I don't know if you remember, but, you know, there was a time when the country was kind of reopening again and they were allowing venues and restaurants and stuff like that to reopen and pubs and the further we got into it. I remember just thinking to myself, I was like, when are we going to start seeing live music again? Because at first they were putting people outside. Then they kind of opened up inside, but tables were all spread apart and stuff like that. And I think it was, it was, such, a, it was such a long time frame for kind of musicians to come back. So I guess when it comes to originals music here, you know, it can be a little bit discouraging to kind of, you know, it's very hard for original musicians to get paid for live shows um, it can be difficult to get kind of decent time slots and obviously now as well in Dublin a lot of venues are disappearing so stuff like that I think for for experienced musicians can be can be a bit disheartening yeah yeah I just I, I remember being a kind of a, an inexperienced musician not having played a lot of shows and I didn't really care about any of that stuff I was just like I just want to play I just want to get up there I don't care about money or any of that stuff but I just want to play but we all get older you know, you have, everybody has bills to pay, so... Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. I don't think we have a whole lot more. Um, no. I don't think we have more time, but I want to ask the last question. Sure, of course. Uh, you already mentioned what do you feel, but I was wondering if you have like any music styles that you don't feel comfortable or you don't like any music style. Oh. That, this kind of ties in very well with uh, with a question that you asked about kind of you know important lessons that I've learned through playing music and stuff like that. I think one of the most important things I've learned and that ties in with that is that there actually isn't really any bad music. Mm -hmm. I find it difficult to say I like I have stuff that I don't like or that isn't my thing. But it doesn't necessarily mean that someone is bad. Like, so for example, someone like Ed Sheeran. I'm not a fan of Ed Sheeran's music. It doesn't do it for me at all. I would listen to it and I go, oh, it feels, you know, it just doesn't doesn't spark uh, the reaction that maybe other people would get from it. But I mean, he's playing however many shows a year. He plays in however many in front of however many people. Sells however much music. He must be doing something right, you know. Yeah. So that's I think not to judge and not to not to kind of come down on music that isn't your thing that's something i've really had to learn because when i you know when you're a teenager and stuff like that particularly when you play rock music it's like no rock music is the best music ever no it's not the way it works and i think that kind of opened my mind to more styles you know more music that i would uh, that i'd be way more interested in you know like country music for example wouldn't have been a thing that i would listen to when i was 17 years old uh, electronic music I wouldn't listen to uh, any of that stuff but it's uh, yeah I find it all good now so but yeah I think stuff like that it's like more, maybe more not generic that's a bad word but maybe like quite popular music wouldn't necessarily be my jam as much as maybe kind of slightly more off uh, off kilter stuff as they would say so okay. yeah thank you very awesome. much uh, is there like a social media that you have that we can uh, check your work later? Yeah, for sure. So you'll find my band, you'll find Jailbirds over uh, on Instagram. It's just at Jailbirds Official. 
Uh, you can find us on Facebook and everything like that. I'm playing with a couple other bands at the moment, but nothing too major. Like I play with the tribute band and I'm playing some session bass for another band. So I think Jailbirds would be a really, really good one to check out there. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah, 